Okay, so let's use the formula and we'll calculate some probabilities. This has actually appeared in the non-calculator portion as well. Because you get the formula, sometimes you're asked just to be able to show that you recognize it as a binomial experiment and that you can fill it in. So, for example, if you want to roll a 6 with a standard die, and you have to do this 3 out of 7 times. So here's, here's what we want. We want an experiment that either succeeds or fails. Okay? So rolling a 6 or you don't roll a 6. That meets the criteria for binomial. Every time you roll the dice, it does not affect the previous, uh, previous roll, does not affect the current roll. So we are binomial for this experiment. Um, there are seven experiments here. So seven experiments for which I want three of them to be successes. So that's how many ways you can be successful in this uh, outcome. Seven choose three. The probability for success is one in six, since there are six numbers on the dice. And we want it to succeed three times. So three times, that probability will give me the number of successes. The number of failures, well, it's five out of six. And there will be the remaining four that fail. So if I roll the dice seven times, I want three to be a six. And I want four to be not a six. So when I add those back up, I end up with the seven rolls. The number of ways that those outcomes could happen is 7 choose 3. So now I've counted the probability for each times the number of times they occur. So 7 choose 3 times 1, 6 cubed, 5, 6 to the fourth. Okay, so this has about an 8% chance of happening. So we'll keep practicing this idea. It does take a, it is a pretty simple one, but it takes a couple to practice before you get used to it. So as I said, you do need to know about this formula, and it is provided. It's not something you need to memorize, but it is provided, and you need to know how to use it, because this may be an answer for the uh, non-calculator portion of your exam. You just be expected to fill in the formula. But 99% of the time, well, maybe not 99, let's say 80% of the time, we're going to use the TI-83 to do it, and the TI-83 has a built-in. So here's the way uh, it works. Um, there's three arguments. The, the name of the function is binome PDF. So what I think of is I think of P as in particular. You'll see why in just a minute. But that's, that's one thing uh, I remember is there's a binome PDF because it's a binomial PDF distribution, and I think of it as particular. The parameters go number of trials for N, the probability of success for P, and the number of favorable outcomes or successes, if you like, for X. Okay. So let's try one here with the TI-83. What's the probability there will be exactly five boys in a family of seven children? So as I said, for particular, that's what they're wanting to know. What's the probability for exactly five, one particular case? Okay. So five boys and seven children. So we're going to go to the calculator, and we're going to bring up this function, binome PDF. And... You have to go to the distribution, so second function variables, that's where you go, and scroll down until you hit binome PDF. So this is what you uh, get on your screen. You actually need to write this down in your written section. So this is how you get full marks. You, you don't need to show all of your work, but you need to show what you put into the calculator. So this would be a binomial experiment. How many trials are there? Yeah, seven. There's seven children, so that's how many trials the experiment gets. Okay. Um, what's the probability for success? Well, let's just, what does success mean in this experiment? One second. What is the probability, or sorry, what is the success in this experiment? What does that mean if you... What can happen for children? 
Boy or girl? What? So that's what's happening in my experiment. It's a boy or it's a girl. So what's success? Having a boy in this experiment is success. So what's the probability that you have a boy? One half. That's right. Okay. How many successes would we like? Five. Five. Don't worry, ladies. It, it would be a success too to have a girl. It's not just you know. It's just the question. It doesn't mean that being you know having a girl is a failure. It's still it's just as good. Okay. So binom PDF seven. A half and five, that's about 16%. Okay, so this is how it would be written into your provincial exam. That's how you would do it to get full marks. Show what you put in your calculator and the answer that it gave you. Yes? Um, earlier as in right here? Yeah, so basically the calculator has plugged everything in for you. This is identical to what we just did. You'll get the exact same answer. It's just a way to do it all in one shot without having to push so many buttons. Okay. okay. But this is where it gets a little more useful to us in the TI-83. Um, we're going to look at something very similar. This is the binome CDF. So when you see that letter C, think cumulative. So what it means is it'll count everything up to and including that letter. So for example, this time, you see it says at most two boys. That means I want no boys, one boy, or two boys. So I want everything up to and including the number two. Okay. So to do this in the calculator, the one we just did, you'd have to add it three times. You'd have binome PDF of 0 plus binome PDF of 1. And then you'd have to keep doing this, and it would be very tedious. Binome PDF of 2. So it would be a lot of work to do. Instead, the calculator does this automatically. Don't do it this way. You're going to put in binome CDF. Ask the calculator to do a cumulative or sum it up for you. Okay. So binome CDF. This experiment has seven trials. Probability of success is one half, and I want it to count everything up to and including the number two. So zero, one, two is what's going to happen here. So that way the calculator does it for me. I don't have to add it up all those times. So let's see what we get here. Binom CDF, 7.5 and 2. So I get uh, about a 22... 23% chance. Okay. So when you have a question where you're thinking at most, what you want to do is you're going to use the binomial and make sure it's the C DF. If it's N and X, then it'll be N P X. Let me just erase this part here so it's easier to see. Okay, so I put the C in capital there just to remind you for now, but when you go at most up to, that's going to be binome CDF. And of course, if we have at most questions, then you can pretty much better believe there's going to be at least. So this time, what's the probability of having at least three boys in a family of seven children? Any ideas on how uh, we've got the tools, we just have to figure out how to use them? Sure, Nick. Oh, that's a good idea. So you'd want at most uh, three girls? Four girls? Okay. Um, that works really well in this instance because the probabilities are both a half. It may not always work for us, but yeah, I think your method's going to work in this case. Can anyone think of another generic way? Yeah, there's going to be a one minus in there. So what does one represent in probability? 100%. All possible outcomes. So if we wanted to look at all possible outcomes, in a family with seven children, that's no boys, one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven boys. What I don't want from here is I don't want that to happen. I want at least three boys. So what I'm doing is I'm going to remove zero, one, and two. The way I do that is I go, one minus the 
binome CDF, seven children, one half for success, and I want to remove everybody up to two. So that's going to be um, the number two here. It will remove all the probabilities for zero, one, and two from this list. Okay, so this ends up giving us uh, 0 0.773473. Uh, so if you want to do it with at least, the pattern is 1 minus the binome CDF. Whoops, N's having trouble here. Of uh, This will be N, P, and X minus 1. 